Hello, welcome back to the channel of Motorbike Nonsense. I'm Tim, this is the new for 2023 Honda Hornet. And on paper, it sounds about as interesting as watching paint drying on your grand's toenails because it costs under 7,000 pounds and it's powered by a parallel twin. But I've been living with this bike for two weeks and it has actually blown me away a little bit. Let's find out why. Right, I know you just want to see me riding this, so I'm gonna keep the walk around as quick as possible. I wanna talk about the main reason I really like this bike. It's Honda's new 755cc parallel twin engine that powers it. It's got just over 90 horsepower and 74 newton meters of torque, and it's got a 15.2 liters of fuel tank, but none of that really matters. What matters is the way it makes you feel. It's got 270 degree crank, which means it has character. Bloody hell. It burbles, it almost pops on the overrun and with the exhaust on it, exhaust? With an aftermarket exhaust, it would sound properly fruity. It sounds pretty good for a standard one, especially on downshifts when you blip them and rev match, it sounds phenomenal. There is an optional quick shifter, this bike doesn't have it, you'll notice that when we go out and ride it. But yeah, that engine, is an absolute peach and it makes it feel naughty it makes you feel good about yourself and it makes it want to do that a little bit which is very unexpected for a honda parallel twin now as you'd expect for a bike in this kind of middleweight class it's designed to be approachable so it's got quite a nice low 795 mil seat height this one does have the optional 800 quid ish touring pack which means i have to kind of charge at it to get on or you can just lean forward and bring your leg over behind you it's not that much of a big deal but that is quite a large tail pack now six foot three which is obviously quite tall but my knees still don't hit that bit of the tank and on some smaller bikes like this i'm just too big for them it's not a problem at all here and if you're a short ass then you're going to be absolutely fine getting your feet down it's a very comfortable riding position and everything just feels well, exactly where it should be, frankly. In terms of electronics, they're reasonably rudimentary. We've got two channel ABS and traction control on this bike, so it has got some things to look after you. There is no inertial measurement unit, so it's not gonna give you lean sensitive traction or cornering, but frankly, you wouldn't normally expect that at this price. The dashboard is really nice and clear. It's got all the rider modes you could ever want that you can set up yourself. You can adjust your power, your engine braking, and your traction control, and save that in a mode. And you can turn traction control completely off, like my ability to say traction control today. It shows you things like your fuel consumption, your trip, the various bits that you can cycle through. It's got a fuel gauge, rejoice. Now, obviously this bike has been built down to a price, but everything you touch with your hands feels pretty good. I love the fact it's got digital dashboard. That's quite unusual on a bike in this class. We've got span adjustable brake and clutch lever. The mirrors are the sort that will spin around eventually, but there are nuts under there to tighten them up. The only cheap looking bits are the rear brake lever and the gear lever, but you don't touch them with your hands and you never really see them. So that's not such a big deal. Now, this bike has got the optional tour pack, which is all this luggage. I'm gonna quickly talk you that. <laughs> now, as I mentioned earlier, this bike's got a 765 pound touring pack on it, which comprises a three litre tank bag, some hard panniers at the side, well, they're semi hard, it's got a bit of a semi on, and this big expandable tail pack. And to be honest, I don't think they're waterproof, but they do each come with its own waterproof overcover. But in my experience, those can blow off and rip when you're really going for it in Germany, but they should be fine in the UK. I'll just quickly show you the panniers. They unzip like this as a car comes past. Come on, Suzuki Ignis. Nice choice, but it's not Honda. So yeah, they've got waterproof covers inside. And yeah, these are still a little bit damp from where I got caught out in snow the other day. There's another waterproof cover as well in the side pocket of this. It's got a side pocket on either side and it does look quite smart. I don't know whether it's worth 765 pounds. It comes with something called protective tape, but that is a tiny little bit of tape to stop the straps rubbing on the seat unit. There's nothing protective as far as I can tell on the tank. And given this is one is in matte yellow, I don't know, magnetic tank bag and matte paint probably isn't the best idea in my book. And this also does feel a little bit cheap. So I might go after market if I was gonna buy one, but hey ho, it's good that Honda are trying to encourage people to bugger off on adventures on their new Hornets. And anyway, I'm gonna bugger off on an adventure now to take this for a ride and stop stooping over. 
Right, I'm going to take you along for a ride on the Hornet. And the first thing you notice when you hop on is that I'm wearing a rucksack and I've got a tail pack. So my spine is bent like on the hunchback of uh, somewhere in Japan. But yeah, it starts with a twist of a key and you get a little Hornety splash screen come up with a little Hornet on it, which is quite cool. It's in the insect, not the motorbike. But anyway, yes, you fire it up, clutch in. And uh, yeah, burbles into life so far so parallel twin but it's actually quite there's warm there's quite a deep and it's quite a loud note that might just be because i um was in spain riding bmws the other day and i accidentally left my earplugs in almeria which is a bit of a schoolboy error isn't it so yes riding without earplugs wouldn't recommend it riding the honda hornet though <laughs> would recommend it it is good um yeah low down fueling it's really impressive on this engine. It's a really friendly engine for first time riders. So the fact that I'm about to go and ride quite quickly, don't let that put you off. Um, and it's a really flexible engine as well. Look, third gear, 15 miles an hour. <laughs> it just accelerates really cleanly. And it does accelerate quite hard. It is quite a quick bike, this. It is unassuming to look at, but when you properly gun it, as I will in a bit, it really comes alive and starts firing you at the horizon quite quickly. But yeah, in terms of comfort, I've been getting on a right with the seat. Apparently the touring pack is meant to give you a slightly different seat, but I don't appear to have that on this press bike. But I've not had any problems, any aches or pains. The suspension feels really well judged as well. It feels not connected to the road, but it doesn't feel cheap and jarring. It's not really adjustable, as far as I'm aware. It's just got a nice setup. It's very Honda. The mirrors are stable as well, but I'm about to get on some motorways. We'll talk about that briefly before hitting the twisties. Not literally, not with my fist. And I do hate it when people say twisties. It's quite a nerdy thing to say. Anyway, let's see if I get covered in cow poo, because I think that's what this is. Muck spreader. Mmm, countryside life, yo. Right, let's get ye yellow hornet up to motorway speeds here in the UK, which is otherwise known as 70 miles an hour. We can talk about wind protection and other bits and bobs. Go on, BMW. Accelerate with all your heart. So that's 70 miles an hour. Stick in sixth. And I'm just doing just over 4,000 RPM. Obviously, I have no wind protection. You probably can't hear me because of all the wind noise. But it's a naked bike. What did you really expect? Now, in terms of fuel economy, I've been getting 54 mpg out of this, and that's been hammering it and enjoying the engine. And this one's only got a couple of miles on it as well. So, uh, yeah, I imagine you'll be able to get 60 if you're a little bit careful out of this. One other thing that is worth mentioning is I don't have cruise control on this, so it's uh, you kind of expect the price to not have that. But it would be nice, given I've got touring pack and all the rest of it. Otherwise. I've got self-cancelling indicators, look, I put them on, leave them on, leave them on, and then after what, maybe about 10 seconds, they should turn off, there you go, they turned off. So that is helpful again, if this is your first bike, you're probably going to be leaving your indicators on by accident. Hell, I know some people have been riding 40 years and still do that. So yeah, it's a useful bit of technology to have, albeit a deeply boring one to talk about. But anyway, you probably can't hear me over the wind noise, I'm going to try and find some new B-roads to go and have some fun on. Right around the twisty country road now, which is really where well, I've been enjoying the Hornet. The engine's actually got an eager to rev that you don't often get in parallel twins. It only rose to 10,000 RPM, but it is worth going up there if you want to go and find your jollies. The brakes there in this in uh, radial calipers, they haven't got the strongest bite, but they do the job. And it's when you're hard on the anchors that you uncover the, the main flaw of this bike, really. It's the suspension. It is a bit basic. It is a bit, I guess, built down to a price. But it is fine when you're pressing on. It's just a lot of weight transfer when you're on the brakes and you can't adjust it out. So that is what it is. But, you know, I weigh the best part of 15 stones, so I'm quite large and I'm quite heavy on this bike as well. If you're a youth who weighs as much as one of my grey beard hairs, then uh, you probably won't have that problem. 
but yeah I've had so much fun tearing around local B roads on this I've done a video already a first ride video it was massively overexposed and barely watchable but click up there if you want to see me hooning this a bit harder than I am at the moment but oh yeah I just love the torque of this engine you really don't expect it from you know a middleweight engine it has got instant shaft almost no matter what the revs I am slightly sad I don't have the quick shifter on this bike because I think that sounds amazing but even flipping around and downshift sounds really quite good it's bar bar it's bassy it's got a rich exhaust note oh it's, it's pretty damn good this bike I can't really think of anything to criticize it for when you consider the price point seven thousand pounds you're getting a lot of bike for that you're getting that digital dashboard that you just don't get on things that cost well three grand more if you're a triumph street triple r even the new one and you're getting some naughtiness as well if you want to experiment with perhaps wheelies this is a very good bike to practice on you can uh, bounce it up off the suspension clutch it up what have you and it's just got a real eager character to it when you start riding it hard when you're mid corner going for it quite hard you will feel the suspension wallow about again might be down to my weight as much as anything else but you've got confidence in it it's got decent tires on it which actually in the cold i didn't like in my previous video but now it's a bit warmer they're absolutely fine well, i suppose i should briefly talk about how this feels around town given that some of these will be used as commuters and things like that it is this is very easy to ride around town the clutch is a cable clutch it is super light the back brake it's not that strong but you can certainly use it to drag and give yourself more confidence when you're filtering now uh, the bar's nice and wide the mirrors don't get buzzy the fueling is pretty good i am in a sporty mode at the moment so it's a little bit jerkier than in normal more comfort i can't remember what it's called um but yeah it is a uh, it's very narrow feels very confidence inspiring i would absolutely recommend this as a town bike or a commuter and again you've got so i'm in fourth gear doing 30 miles an hour and it still pulls really hard when you want it to there's no jerkiness in the throttle there's no snatchiness it feels good around town what a lovely lovely view one thing i did just want to mention that i forgot to earlier is this bike doesn't have a mud guard or a hugger so um <laughs> it's pretty filthy in there and I think I'd have a load of crap up my back if it wasn't for some of this luggage it's caught a bit of spray there it's just a little thing but yeah cool bike otherwise oh yeah I quite like the yellow it also comes in red grey and black I think so yeah Honda Hornet if I was going to give it a score out of 10 considering its price and all that as a machine to go out and buy eight and a half nine it's that good it is that good and there's a big range of accessories and um yeah just don't be put off buying it even if you're an experienced rider because in honda's marketing materials this bike well, there's lots of edgy cool hip people with braids in their hair and stuff pouting at the camera and some of the color schemes are a bit out there like the red ones or the red forks for example might not be a cup of tea but actually if you know what you're doing on a bike this is really good fun as much fun as if you don't know what you're doing on a bike but yeah i think honda's really upset the apple car with this bike Obviously, it goes up against the likes of the mt07 which is hugely popular and i think this outclasses that bike in every way apart from possibly looks it feels gruntier it feels naughtier it feels like honda's really stole the march on the yamaha's uh, market there so yeah anyway i'm gonna stop waffling i'm gonna try and find a road that isn't covered in mud to be honest I've got an afternoon off work doing this and I was going to go home and fetch my KTM 1290 Super Adventure after I've reviewed this and go for a proper blast on a 160 horsepower adventure bike that does third and fourth gear power wheelies. I'm not going to do that. I'm actually having just as much fun on this <laughs> and this little £7,000 whippersnapper of a bike. And yes, I know I keep saying £7,000 if it's affordable. I know £7,000 is still a lot of money. It's just not for what you're getting here. Anyway, that's more than enough waffle. Thank you for watching if you've made it this far. Drop me any questions you have in the comments and I'll try to answer them. And uh, leave me a comment otherwise. And the Japanese word for hornet's nest and i shall see you next time thank you for watching i've been tim this has been the honda hornet and we're good friends see you later <laughs>